sure. Um, and then the other one that we uh, were also um, considering consent was item uh, number nine, because there's still, uh, we would just receive and file um, that uh, item, because they're still working on coming back with sponsorships and other things. Okay. I'm sorry, so item nine is a receive and file on the report and then have the department come back on additional information on sponsorship. Okay. Um, and then uh, we do have a card on item two, so we will call that special um, on item two. So it will just be item number seven and item number nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. That will be the order. Um, Mr. Parks, we... Um, as you're coming up, we were going to uh, ask for seven and nine to be on consent. Um, and nine, they will come, we'll just receive and file their current report, and they'll come back talking about sponsorships and other funding. Um, they're still meeting on that. Uh oh. Okay? Great. That will be the order. Um, so just continue now. We're just going to receive and file the report they have given us, and then um, it, <coughs> they will come back and report. Okay? Give us on any status as you're going forward. I know there's still ongoing conversations. So, okay. Great. Thank you very much. Um, item number one. Item number one is a communication from the Mayor relative to the appointment of Mr. Rodriguez to the Board of Transportation Commissioners for a term ending June 30th, 2013. Good afternoon. Yes, please have a seat. Welcome. Mr. Rodriguez and I had a chance to meet yesterday. He's quite an, an impressive young man in his uh, resume and education and um, interest in the issue of transportation. And as someone at an early age took public transportation, as he described to me, uh, going to high school um, and, get, and also uh, traveling the uh, freeways in Los Angeles, but has a great interest in, in our transportation committee and what your willingness to serve. So maybe if you'd like just to start off and say a few words. Sure. Sure. Uh, my name is Jaime Rodriguez. I'm a lifelong resident of, of the city of L.A. Um, uh, like the council member just said, I, I haven't grown up here. I've, I've been keenly aware of the transportation issues affecting our city. Um, from an early age, I, I, I would commute with my parents around the MTA from my house in Mount Washington to my high school, which is uh, located between, on Venice between Vermont and Normandy. Um, so today I, I live in Silver Lake. My office is in Westchester, and I take the streets. So you can just imagine what that's like on a daily basis. Um, I'm, I'm definitely aware of the need for smart transportation policies. And um, in addition, on, on a professional note, before I arrived at Univision, I, which is my current employer, I, I worked at two law firms um, on infrastructure projects, some of which were, were transportation projects. So I've, I've, uh, I've done financings for public-private partnerships and, and the like. So. Wonderful. Um, do you have any questions for him? I just want to welcome you aboard. No, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Alcon, okay. I did, I, I did uh, share with him the um, importance, um, and we, we do have a public comment card on item number one, uh, but, and Mr. Sachs, if you'd like to make your way up here um, for public comment. I did um, share with Mr. Rodriguez the importance of coming back to us um, on issues before the Transportation uh, Commission um, and to uh, challenge the department. I can tell that as I look around at the department to um, their expertise and knowledge, even though it is not necessarily a charter requirement on certain things, that they're, the issues that they bring up should be addressed by the, by the department and by um, the city. So uh, <coughs> I, I look forward to, to you doing that. Do so it. before you leave, Mr. Sachs, um, a public yeah. comment card on Mr. Rodriguez. Good, good, good afternoon, Arnold Sachs. Um, I was just wondering if you would have any purview over any kind of the taxicab administration programs or separate taxicab commission. So either, there would be no dealings with this. That okay. made it easy. So, um, seeing there are no objection, it will be unanimous uh, to uh, approve your appointment, and we look forward to you coming to City Council. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Uh, we did have, uh, I think our next item then would be item number three. Item number Excuse three. Number two. Item number two is a Board of Transportation Commissioners report relative to the one year extension of the Hala Taxi Program. Setnyahu? Setnyahu? Come, come on up. Yes. We were going to approve it, but you, you, had, you had a card, so I want to. Nice to see you. <coughs> nice to see you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for letting me speak in front of you. Uh, we do support the hail taxi program. We need the OTS cooperation, the program to work. 
when drivers are ticketed, the news travels fast, and they will be discouraged to pick up from anywhere. And uh, we need uh, a departmental communications, including the sheriff and the county. The sheriff are giving us a ticket, and uh, unless that communication takes place, it's really uh, very hard to the program to work. Uh, the other one is we're still uh, waiting for the taxi parking permit issue, and uh, hopefully the next meeting we'll see it in the agenda. Uh, the other one is, you know, when taxi drivers are coming to get their permit renewed, they are waiting outside in the sun and rain. And we discussed this in the taxi commission, and the taxi commissioners issued to find some solution, but still over three months, no solution. It's, the last time I was there, it was raining, they were waiting outside. Please, uh, you know, look at it. We need some solution for that. Okay. Thank, 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 thank you very much for, for coming. and. Um, and are you, I didn't understand the first part. On the hail the cab program, are you saying they're giving, they're not, they're giving you tickets or they're not? Is it working? They are giving you tickets to the Sharif, the county, motor bicycle guys coming and ticket, ticketing drivers. When we go to uh, DOT, uh, the cooperation is not that much. And I've been told to write a letter to Sharif Baka <laughs> when I was, and uh, the department's job is to communicate and uh, you know, to how I find some solution. So I know the idea in the hail a cab program was to um, allow uh, taxi cab drivers to actually pick up, you know. Um, pick up and drop. Right, but not to sit in the room. No, 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 okay. no, no sitting. Just over three seconds, about a lot of drivers got ticketed. I brought the ticket and what time, where the, the you know, from GPS mapping and everything, they didn't have no solution. Right, okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Colleagues, um, if not any questions, we um, would approve. Yes. Is, is there, is there staff there. Yes, staff. You said a couple of questions. On the hail of taxi. Okay, why don't you go ahead and ask your question, and then we'll go to the staff that we have. Thank you. My question, Arnold Saxon, and my question would be, you're extending the program for a year. Um, are you extending the area of operations that are included in the program? Because right now it's limited to downtown area and Hollywood. So will it be the extension of the program include extending the areas to be covered by the, the health care program? Well, I'll ask the department to respond to that question and to Mr. Parker's question. So would you like to respond to that question? Thanks. Uh, Amir Sadati, Assistant General Manager, uh, Tom Drischler, Taxi Cab Administrator. Uh, at this point, we are still evaluating the pilot, so the extension would be still downtown in um, Hollywood. However, with the Taxi Commission, there has been discussion of potentially other areas. So as we move forward, there will be routine reports to the Taxi Commission and uh, based on um, that information, if there is ability to extend it in other areas, we can do that. But at this point, what is before you is the extension of the pilot in downtown in Hollywood. Let me just ask, um, and we've had some conversation on this issue out in the community. What kind of befuddles some people, how do they know uh, where the zones are? How do we do the outreach to let the community know that We've expanded where they can pick up cab. Cab drivers may know, but a visitor or a person that's shopping downtown may not know that there's this flexibility. How, how did we go about doing that? Um, that's a great question, Council Member, and it was also brought up in the Taxi Commission. Um, we've worked extensively with the, um, the both chambers uh, and uh, the property improvement business districts, so Central City Association, the Hollywood uh, bid, and they also try to give out the word because they have a lot of uh, influence. They have newsletters, websites, and, and so forth. So as you know, in downtown, there's the additional signs that was put up in, in many of the areas. So I think that's what um, we're changing a culture, which is going to take some time, but education is a key component of that program. Um, so I think it would be helpful to work with those stakeholders that have access and maybe neighborhood councils and other uh, you know, groups that have access to the public. As far as tourists coming in, um, you know, many of them do think that 
do think that you can hail a taxi so they don't have a problem doing that but as far as the residents and the businesses that are in the area if we can use those resources to better educate the program we've done many we've done news releases we have it on our website and we are working with those stakeholders to have to find a better way to educate the public through the industry and the drivers and roll calls you know that program is being spread out through the drivers you know that to get them to change the behavior and patrol and cruise instead of going to located taxi zones anything else Tom on that let me ask you one of the comments you made is that is our expectation that our local residents use this more than visitors or do we have a sense of it as this program was evolving council member we know especially in downtown with the a lot of residential units going up and LA live and the businesses that are open later it was a way to get more of the residents and visitors to LA to use you know taxis more routinely especially later in the evenings as far as tourism I mean we can definitely work with the convention and and work figure out a better way because we have the information it's just a matter how to disseminate that information and perhaps one of the concerns and I know it's a pilot when it gets to be a permanent program and I'm glad you mentioned convention in LA Inc but unlike other cities we've basically localized the location to specific places you can do it in other cities they just kind of walk out in the street and hail a cab and that's and if the cab driver is being accurate, the last thing we need is people getting these types of citations for a lack of information or a cab driver getting a citation because he or she is responding to a person that is unfamiliar with the designated area and just walks out and hails a cab. And that's the kind of looseness that you just wonder how how we're going to get that out and train people to know that in the city of LA it's if we went from no hailing to specific locations and then because we're basically training them quote our way inconsistent with what the rest of the world does um again I think it is a change in culture and philosophy hailing was never illegal and that's like the big perception out there that it was illegal so it's never illegal to hail but in years of the the industry and the way we did taxis here regulate taxis we provided zones and taxis decided to go to those zones and many hotels and and park and wait there in order to catch you know the more lucrative trips to downtown all of our traffic officers Los Angeles Police Department have been excellent and we haven't really had any problems there are you know case-by-case situations on sit on tickets that we are looking at investigating and few of those are actually majority of those were either a sheriff or a CHP or some other entity that again we're going to can help train those law agencies to what we're trying to do here to inform them but we have not had any problems with you know major tickets and I can bring you all the stats council member we're doing a great job allowing the taxi drivers to pick up and drop off passengers what occasionally happens right now especially with LA live in the Staples Center they want to park park and wait for those passengers and a lot of times LAPD warns them to move because that is not part of this program you can't park and wait for someone you actually have to kind of go around until somebody raises their arms or you know try to do it in active loading and unloading so it does take time and that's why we're before you to ask for the extension to you know continue measure the performance measurements that we have put in place and be able to develop it in a way that in time I think residents, visitors, businesses all will understand that you can hail and that taxi drivers in can change and and it's a demand and supply issue obviously so the more taxi drivers drive and cruise and the more public sees the ease of benefit of using them then you will start seeing a shift. So our expectation is that you'll come back what after the year pilot extension? Uh, our plan was to come back really in six months to, uh, with the taxi commission and then in that time we can have a, a recommendation to perhaps uh, extend it to other areas of the city or or not okay, thank you now we're going to continue to want to
<clears throat> do publicity around it. But we, we've done it. We did a couple times. You, you, you missed uh, Jan and I out there on the street corner. Did you not see us no, uh, hailing a taxi <laughs> cab? Yeah. I'm glad <laughs> you said hailing the taxi yeah. cab. Yeah. <laughs> If you'd, put a, yeah, if you'd have put a period after the street corner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So on that item, what we would do is approve the extension of the Hala Taxi uh, program. Thank you. Next item. Item number three is the Chief Legislative Analyst Report relative to an update from the Historic Broadway Corridor Parking Task Force. Good afternoon. Alex Moya from the CLA. How did they resolve? Um. Well, we, on, on item number nine, we did was we received and filed the report, and they're still meeting to come back with <coughs> what their recommendations. So there'll be an action that, that, that they will take. Um, the report's going to come back from the. Did the Dodgers at all share with us their books of all the money they made last year? Well, we can. I mean, again, what we talked about today was just receiving and filing the report that they had, and that they're still working. If we want to have a separate discussion, we can. Well, I just want to do a shout out and say that that item number nine, I do not feel the city should subsidize that shuttle whatsoever, and they should pick up their own tab for a nice revenue generating stream. Last time they were here, I asked to see their numbers. They bring in Manny and they create an energy there, and I don't want my taxpayers picking up that tab anymore. And I don't think note and file will the action be for them to deal with it. The action that this is just a report on what happened last time. Oh, okay. So it's not it's not the going for. They're going to come back oh, with if there's any recommendations. Okay, great. Sorry about that. That's Thanks. Right. <clears throat> okay, yes. Um, after uh, several monthly meetings, the Broadway Corridor Parking Task Force has uh, reviewed relevant parking studies and assessed the need for new parking in the Broadway Theater District. Um, a summary of those findings can be found in an attachment to uh, the report. But uh, after conducting uh, that parking after concluding that the parking supply um, is presently insufficient, the task force uh, has decided to solicit parking proposals from owners of property located <coughs> within an area bounded by 5th Street to the north, Spring Street to the east, 9th Street to the south, and Hill Street to the uh, west. A statement of interest was mailed to property owners within the area who may be interested in selling land to the city and or venturing in with the city uh, to develop one or more mixed-use projects um, that would uh, ultimately include a major parking facility within the target area. Uh, ten proposals were submitted, and the task force reviewed and evaluated the proposals based on the location, um, their size, and accessibility of the proposed parcels. At this time, the task force requests authority to negotiate with proposers who submitted responses and have met the criteria stated in the SOI. Additionally, uh, in order to uh, immediately begin uh, to address the parking needs in the area, authorities requested to negotiate extending business hours with the local private parking, parking loan uh, lot owners. Approval was requested to allow the CAO to extend MICLA funding uh, and to have the city attorney to assist in the development of legal documentation. Also, we request authorization to direct city departments and agencies to identify the feasibility of uh, using municipal garages as satellite parking. Okay. Um, I know we have uh, Jessica Weatherly McLean who went from Councilmember Weiser's office who's working on bringing back Broadway and then we also have Mr. Carrion. Jessica, do you Okay. Mr. Carrion? Yes, my name is Mr. Carrion and I'm questioning if anybody's looked into the um, lack of citations by the parking enforcement officers in this district. In, on North Broadway, in the community you just mentioned, we have the highway patrol on 4th Street and downtown, and they seem to just come and park where they want. According to the laws that you have on your books here of the City of Los Angeles, it is illegal to park to do standard business. I handed one of these out to each one of you in your departments. It's the parking enforcement uh, policy for government mileage vehicles. And it states right here that no one with an e-plate is exempt at all. Emergency vehicles are not exempt, and I'm wondering if they're adding this into their survey. We're going to <clears throat> have a task force 
and I feel it should be equally across the board, citing everybody, not only the public. Thank you, Mr. Carrion. And I did talk again to the LAPD representative in council as well today about uh, talking to the leadership of LAPD and their staffs and sending that message down, and particularly in the area. Uh, we've talked about where they don't have their new parking lot, but that doesn't mean they park in front of fire hydrants or um, in, in, and, the, in the handicap, handicap parking zones. Yeah, one no. that got me the most. Yes, no. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Good afternoon. My name is Jessica Weddington McLean. I'm here representing Councilmember Jose Wizar, who has asked me to come and express his strong support for the recommendations in this study and in the report. Uh, Broadway, of course, is one of the highest priority projects for the council member, the Bringing Back Broadway project. And while we have many components of this initiative, from transportation via the streetcar to doing a streetscape program, an overlay zone, design guidelines, lighting guidelines. It's very comprehensive. Parking is a large component of what we need to do in order to stimulate the economic development downtown. As you'll see in the report, we have about a million square feet of commercial space that is completely vacant in the upper floors of Broadway's buildings right now. Uh, even though the code may not require parking, businesses need to park their workers somewhere and they're not going to invest in the rehabilitation necessary unless we can provide parking. Uh, Ten of our 12 historic theaters on Broadway aren't open to the public for active entertainment or other uses right now. And again, the same thing holds true. People that come to theater need to have a place to park. I do want to point out, however, that because we are very active in mass transit projects and the streets car and all of the public transportation projects happening downtown, the um, numbers that were provided in the report actually only represent about 60% of uh, 40% of the people that would actually come driving. We're counting on 60% of the people that, that come downtown and use this million square feet of uh, commercial space and use these 10 inactive theaters that will make 12 active one of these days. We had count on 60% of them using some form of public transportation or alternate mobility, walking, biking, carpooling, riding the gold line, riding the red line. So we're only accounting for 40% of the parking that we would need. So we feel that's a very conservative estimate of what we're actually going to need, and we would appreciate your support in helping us get there. Thank you. Colleagues, do you have any questions? I would just like to ask the staff on um, recommendation two. Is there a dollar figure? On that, it just kind of briefly mentions Mikola to uh, extend 0809 to 0910. Currently, we have not uh, identified any specific amount. Uh, the only thing we are certain of is that we would like to extend uh, Mikola funding to keep it as an option for the 2009 2010 fiscal year. Okay, so there's no dollar amount. You're just asking that to be one of the the source of sources of funding, potential sources of funding? That's right. Because okay. we need to clarify, I think the wording is, because it appears the way it's written, as though there's money set aside in 08, 09, and we want to uh, basically uh, move it towards the 09, 10 budget. So we're just saying that that's a potential source. That's Member Parks, if you don't mind. Um, my understanding, sir, is that in the 08-09 budget, there was an allocation of MICLA, mm -hmm. an amount to be determined, but it was authorized by council to use MICLA for Broadway parking. But this we, was during the SPRF discussion, you may recall. Okay. I mean, but we don't have a dollar amount? There wasn't a dollar amount because at the time we didn't have identified parcels. We were at the very beginning of all of this, and we knew that we would be pursuing those. So the, in the in the budget report, according to what I've read, and the CLA or excuse me, the CAO has let us know that it says authorized to use MICLA as a debt service with an amount to be determined. So of course we have to come back to council for all of that authorization. We don't. I mean, we don't have a ballpark figure of what we're talking about. At this point, sir, we don't because we haven't begun negotiations on any properties. All right. Thank you. No. So the action would be to um, approve the CLA's recommendations. That would be the order. Next item. Item number four is the DOT report relative to the request for information regarding the allocation of funding for the state and federal safe routes to school program. <clears throat> Uh, Harry Paul Veer, DOT, and on my right side is Michael Werner from DOT. 
And I will Roger me to IC from Caltrans. Okay. Ron Olive with the Bureau of Street Services. Uh, the report in front of you uh, discussed three issues we had with the Safe Lawsuit School Program uh, in the past, and we are working closely with our senior management staff at Caltrans to work out those things. We have made very good progress. Um, we are all in agreement now. Uh, the, the process has to be fair and transparent, open. Uh, it is reasonably open now. Uh, Caltrans has agreed to allocate funds based on the school age population. In the past, except in cycle number seven, we were a little short based on the school age population. And then, then there is issue of the evaluation committee in this process, which should include more pedestrian-oriented expertise because a lot of kids walk to the school. So these are the issues we have been working with Caltrans. We had a telephone conference where our general manager, Rita Robinson, and general manager, Bureau of Street Services, um, Mr. Bill Robertson and Doug Failing and others participated. We are on the same page. I'm glad to report that we're working together. So that means, I, go ahead. Yeah, I, I can just add to that this. Um, last week we went ahead and we sent the letters out to all cities because the call for project started last week and it's also on our website page. This time we're looking at um, $48 million statewide. Our first share will be in District 7, which is covered Los Angeles and Ventura counties, close to about 12 to $13 million. And we are going to be working very closely with the cities. I know we receive about 90 to 100 applications. And from City of LA, we do receive between 20 to 30 applications. You, see, you can see it's very competitive. For those projects that are over $600 million, uh, I know we have a challenge, and we will go ahead and kind of split that work to make sure that we get the job out in two phases. So we'll work very closely with the staff and with the city staff to make it happen. So our concern, and colleagues, we introduced this motion because we were concerned about our fair share um, relative to the number of school children we have yes, and compared to other parts of the state and to really understand the distribution. And so I guess what I'm hearing is that one, that you're going to take that into consideration in the criteria for this next group, as well as the pedestrian-oriented kind of expertise. We did, with respect to the first year, is we used to receive about 25 percent. Right now, we're receiving close to 29 percent, which is about a couple of million dollars more uh, from the previous years. Uh, with respect to adding the, the, um, to, the, to the evaluation committee, the pedestrian groups uh, will be happy to do that, and we, we will add that to, to the committee to to make more diverse group involved. Okay. And um, I know that um, um, we're, one of the things that you're looking at is the guidelines state that the applicant has a clear, detailed description of all the safety risks. Um, do you have a way in which you rank those safety risks, which are higher, you know, as you look at kind of an objective review of the applications? I think these are the criteria that that exist statewide, and we go against those criteria, and, and that's how they evaluate them. And the, the committee do apply the statewide criteria. But the good things about it in the past, we used to evaluate the applications and score them and send them to headquarters, which is Sacramento. They also look at it again and evaluate them and score them again, and we end up being sometimes in the bottom. This time, we changed the process. Now, we will make the decision here in the district final decision will be here, it does not go to Sacramento. The only reason we send it to Sacramento just to make sure that they believe that they do minimum, meet the minimum qualification. Okay, great. Not that I don't like Sacramento, no, no. no. <laughs> not now. <laughs> but we know better, or you know better here in Los Angeles. Sometimes yeah, keep, right keep on, a, yeah. Um, okay, and one, just one question. During the last cycle, each council district was limited to submitting two school projects. Um, is that going to be the case for this um, application? I know the application I think is due in April. I saw that correctly. Yeah, it is in April. That's what we've proposed, and we'd like to do that because right now the, the call for projects that MTA is running and the Safe Routes to Schools are going to be right on top of each other. The applications are due the same week, I think. Okay. MTA hasn't announced exactly what date, but uh, they said the middle of March, and the Safe Routes to Schools applications are due March 15th. So they're due, they're due March 15th. Uh, sorry, April 15th. Okay, I was going to say, because I have reporting yeah. back in 
Mm -hmm. Two months. Same time. Um, so, and 60 days. Um, should we have you come back in 45 days with what, what we're going to submit? I mean, you have to submit April 15th, you said? Yeah. April? Okay. April 15th. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what date can you come back with the recommendations to allow us to get a little bit of review as well as going back to the council? I think the only opportunity, if I can, is the last meeting in March. Um, Okay. so that they can get the applications ready and the council can approve okay. that. So I think that's what so we're shooting that for. Would, that's what would be the recommendations. The last meeting in March of the Transportation Committee would have your recommendations there. And are you reaching out to each of the, not only the our, our city departments, um, uh, street services being here, but each of the council offices? Yes. yes. We've, had, we've had two meetings uh, with council offices, and then this week and next week we will be meeting individually with council offices that to discuss their um, okay. individual needs. Okay. All right. We do, and we, I won't have all your comments, and then we do have two public speakers. So, did you want to add anything, Ron? Not at this time, Madam Chair, unless you have any questions. Richard and Bernard? Just, uh, you mentioned a couple dollars, but I noticed the maximum cost is 900000 600000 600, Not to exceed 600 yes. Mm -hmm. And if it does exceed 600 we can split the work. To two, two phases. To my, it says the average project award. That's all. I'm reading the announcement. Might have raised out, which is very good news to you guys. It's, this means the project can be a larger project than than the 600. Well, normally here. In the past, we used to receive, we used to receive 25 percent of the statewide funding. Right now, we receive close to 29 percent. In the past, we used to receive about $10 million. Now, we receive between 12 to $13 million. Hopefully, that will explain it. It is. I know what you mean. Up to 900 per project. Up to per, 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 per project. project. Per project. The funding for the for Caltrans, this 67 cover Los Angeles and Ventura County, is moved from 10 million to about 12 to 13 million dollars. So the total amount of our application will be around. It's it's up to you what you want to go for. If if, uh, but right now you cannot exceed that total amount, which is about 13 million dollars available. And remember, we have 113 cities. Well, we won't be successful of all of ours, but okay. we'll hope. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the only concern that I, I will have from, the, from Caltrans is that some of the cities, I'm not talking about City of Ali in particular, that uh, they, they don't complete the project on time. They sit on the projects for two, three, four, five years, and that does not make the city neither us look good. So I really encourage the city very much when they commit to deliver the project on time to deliver those projects on time. Yes, how many <coughs> projects did we submit last year? Around 30 to 32, maybe. And, the, and how many of them were funded? Four, I believe. How Six. many? Four. Four? Four. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Around four. Six. Around. Wait a minute. If you're saying two per district, yes. that's right, but 30 that's, that's... we submit, and only four got funded? Around there, yeah. I think we got about, last time we got about 5% of the pot. And that's why we are, that's why we had this before us, because we want to make sure that mm -hmm. it's a fair, Getting equitable The yeah. city of Los Angeles by population is about 10% of the population of the state. So kind of our target, our goal is to get about 10% of the money. And last time it was about 5%, and so that's, that's why we're having these discussions. But, uh, what is the amount of money on the four projects? I'm sorry? How much funding did we receive on the four projects? Around $2 million, I think. Yeah, 2.7. Almost three. Almost $3 million. Because one of the things we were concerned with is that we, I think, proposed a one project, yes. and we couldn't figure out, did we get a better sense on the denials, what's required in the future? Because it was, it was, we couldn't make sense out of uh, uh, how Poche was not viewed favorably when we have a brand new train running right within 10 feet of it 
and a few other things as to bringing kids, something like 3,000 kids to that campus. Right. So did we get any sense of, on criteria, uh, what we can do to shore up those proposals? We, we got a response from Caltrans. Uh, we will be working with them on their response and see where we stand by the time we submit the applications. So. Okay. But I mean, is there written criteria or is that, is it Kentucky windage or what? Uh, the written criteria are, in my view, not very specific, and we're working with Caltrans in Sacramento to, to fix that. I think there are, if, if I were to characterize in very, very broad terms um, the what the application asks for, it asks for descriptions of various things. Describe the need, describe the uh, uh, possible benefit. Um, they're descriptions of things, and, and what I think they need to do with the application is to be more prescriptive and ask for very specific data that will help them evaluate the projects better. Uh, for example, they, they do ask for accidents, but accidents can be shaved and cut in many different ways. And you could say, we have 78 accidents in this school shed, the, the area that, that, draw, that uh, we draw children from, or you could say we have uh, seven accidents that are in the immediate area of the fix that we're proposing, or you can say we have two accidents that are directly related to the fix that we're proposing. And when, when the application just asks for accidents, the applicants and the evaluators have no idea what the number means to them, and therefore the number is not very useful. Mm -hmm. And so I think Caltrans needs to uh, be more prescriptive in their application package to ask exactly what kind of data they, they want so that when everybody sees the data, they can, they can know what the data means and they can evaluate various projects. This one had 78 accidents, this one had 80 accidents, this one had 90 accidents. And they know that all those accidents are the same kind of accident. And that's just one example, but speed, volumes, those kinds of things are really important in terms of, I think, being able to discriminate need. And I think that's what needs to happen with the application, and we will work with Caltrans in Sacramento to make that happen. That's out of the control of District 7. It, it's not within their purview. They, they are one vote out of 12 uh, district votes and then other votes at headquarters. Do you think we'll have some input on the criteria? Or, or I, I believe so. Uh, there's a new local programs um, a person in Sacramento, and I think uh, uh, he understands the problem and that we can work with him to, to fix it. Because one of the things we'd like to see if, if there's information we can get, because we're going to re or brush up the project that was denied last year and put it back, we wouldn't like to do it all over again with no new information mm -hmm. of how to strengthen mm -hmm. it or what was deficient in it. Absolutely. In my understanding from the, my staff that they've been going out to the field with the LCT to the, to, the, to the site and we're helping you guys very closely to, to get the application ready in the proper format. Yeah, because the, the motion specifically which was asking that same question, Mr. Parks, was before we had the application that asked them to present us with the evaluation criteria, the details on the evaluation committee membership, the selection process and the, their <coughs> determination behind that allocation of funding mm -hmm. prior to us applying to the next one so mm -hmm. that we could, and, if we're, and as you give your example of Fauché, to be able to be competitive in the next round. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very interesting discussion. I first want to thank Ms. Gruel for putting the motion so we actually have this discussion uh, in this committee. And I appreciate Doug failing and his leadership on, on some of the projects. Um, have we as a city, is there anybody here from the mayor's office? lobbying arm or lobbyist group. Uh, I'd like them to explain why we're only getting uh, four projects uh, and what efforts does our assembly and senate delegations uh, have in this. Have they been involved? Have we involved any of our assembly members or state senators to fight for LA City? Um, <laughs> Sheila Kuehl's office uh, sent a letter to Will Kempton last year on this issue. And um, this year, um, Assemblyman Fuentes uh, staff came up to us and asked about um, the process and what might be done, and we, we briefed them. 
But, but keep That's in, all I know about conservatives. Just, just keep in mind one thing really important. I understand in the last year we had we did not we did not have that much control over the process sure. and scoring. Right now we have more money and we have more control over the projects. So we expect it to be um, a better outcome for the city. How do you do? Yeah, I want to make sure that we involve Ted Lieu, um, Julia Brownlee, um, Michael Fuhr, and Karen Price, who are my four assembly members, uh, and with Jenny Arpeza and Fran Pavley, who are my state senators, and that all of those six electeds whose responsibility from us, the people, is relationships on state agencies and groups. I'd like all six of them contacted uh, and, and from my district, and I clearly want them to be advocates for me w with Caltrans. I think that will help. Okay. Fine. Second thing I, I want to suggest as we go forward with shovel-ready projects for President Obama's economic stimulus packages, uh, and we're looking at billions of dollars, this is a nickel. This ain't enough money. Mm -hmm. And frankly, um, kids matter and bicycles, paths, and, and calming methods around schools. So it's totally inadequate as far as I'm concerned. And I would like to get a, a report back of how the economic stimulus package, shovel-ready projects, could add some additional funding. Uh, instead of nickels and dimes, maybe we can get some real dollars. Mm -hmm. And then instead of fighting over crumbs, there's a bigger pie that our assembly and senators can provide leadership for so that it isn't just for for the city of Los Angeles. I, I frankly feel that it's um, uh, um, disappointing uh, that, that that's what happened. But I think we are in a new day, and I think we should tie this in to the shovel-ready concept and go back for bigger bucks. Because we're also told, at least I sat in a meeting last week, the League of Cities that have been appointed to a transportation committee Many of the cities are very concerned what role Caltrans will play in that economic stimulus package monies. We're now told it will go to Caltrans first before it comes out to, say, MTA or DOT. <coughs> and I'd like some kind of an appreciation of that mechanism when we go forward. We, we had last Friday uh, a summit with, uh, with Secretary Dale Bonner, and we went over uh, the principles. We went over... Um, when the money comes from Washington, D.C. to California, how we're going to distribute the fund, who, with what formula. And we went over that in really details uh, last Friday. It was between 1 and 4 o'clock. We had about over 200 uh, phone callers. It was over the phone. Yeah. And they went in detail. I'll be happy to share the information with the city about the breakdown of the funds because I understand the fund is going to be coming to, to Caltrans. But keep, keep in mind, we, we submitted, for example, on our behalf, or close to about uh, a few billion dollars of free will projects. Yeah. But at the same time, the county is going to submit. The city is also submitting. So uh, we under, but, but, but the breakdown is coming as follows. We have $45 billion coming from the stimulus package for transportation, as you're aware, yeah. 15 to transit, 30 to highways. And from the highways, we will receive, Caltrans will receive one, one, one billion dollars, yeah. while the counties and the cities receive two billion dollars. So from there, it goes back to the region, how, how they're going to distribute that. Mm -hmm. yes. no, and I'm excited about that, and I do look forward to our lobbyists coming to the next meeting, explain to us how they're energizing right. for advocacy uh, for the city. last point I want to make is this Friday, I'm holding, holding a Caltrans meeting in my office for all Caltrans projects in the 11th district. So the partnership between the city and DOT and everything can expedite some projects that it took three years to do something in one of my areas. And last night, I went before the homeowners group. We finally finished it two weeks ago, and, and that was the Westdale group and Palms going over the 405, okay. which I'm sure you're aware of. I'm aware of that. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. Mr. Alicorn, before we have uh, public the, comment. The primary purpose of these funds is to make children safer. Uh, is there any way for you to, uh, as the projects emerge, uh, is there any way for you to evaluate which projects uh, should have a higher priority based on which ones will make more kids safer? Uh, I, I'm very concerned when I hear about regional advocacy. Uh, if, 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 if the council member wants to advocate to the legislature, you should do that directly, right not direct staff just to do it for your district. I agree. Uh, if anything, you should do it based on uh, the, the safety for the children. Uh, and I don't care whether it's in my district or somebody else's district, if that's where the biggest problem can be solved. So, yeah. um, sure. so uh, as you, uh, if you work with legislators, frankly, I don't think legislators, having been a legislator, I can tell you, I don't think legislators have a huge impact on this process. Uh, it's it's Caltrans, but but I think uh, we should be driven and and we should fight for those projects that are going to save the most lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
uh, and are in areas with the highest concentrations of children. Yeah. I, agree with I, you. I think what what I intended to do was to fight for a an application process that identifies those kinds of projects. <laughs> and so we need we need to get the data, and we need to yeah. um, be very prescriptive about yeah. about that data and how it's going to be used. Now, um, I'm concerned also about the shovel-ready projects and, and us uh, perhaps uh, incorporating projects that are already listed in the shovel-ready projects. And, and if they're funded by the feds, we might lose an opportunity to get funding uh, if the state also funds them. Uh, <laughs> then then uh, we, we will lose a project. So what's the timing of the decisions for the federal shovel-ready projects versus the safer. Well, right now, uh, right now it's 120 days. Within 120, 120 days, the project has to be under construction. No, no, I understand that. Our, uh, uh, when will we know which projects the feds okay. will fund, so that it will we have an opportunity to take those projects out okay. uh, of this application? Um. Because this application doesn't have to be submitted till April. Yeah. yeah. Will we know before April uh, from the federal government? We will probably know by April. Okay. So, so I think uh, that's one way to handle the, the issue of the the shovel-ready projects. If we don't, we're just going to have to roll the dice. So, but I th I do think you should factor that into your analysis. If there's any way to get a heads up from the federal government as to which projects they're likely to support, that might be helpful. Uh, I believe the mayor's office is working on that, but we have a lot of the the decision making process isn't all at the federal government. What they've done is they've pushed the money down based on existing formulas uh, that they use for for normally distributing funds, and as they do with most federal funds, they push the decision making down to the local level. And so the decision making I don't know what's taking so long. It's been eight days already. <laughs> Uh, in those eight days, the the, uh, the requirements have changed drastically. I mean, we we I've heard, I've heard as much as a hundred or two two years to start construction, and that's just way too long for stimulus. It seems to me. We'll be following it closely. So, um, uh, we do have two public comment cards uh, from uh, Damian Newton and from Stephen Box. Um, hi, my name is Damian Newton. Um, I'm speaking today because on the last round of Safe Routes to School grants uh, that Caltrans had the committee for, I was the representative for LA Walks, uh, temporarily replacing Deborah Murphy because she had written one of the grants that was in front of the committee. Um, my pedestrian background is mostly from back east where I led a pedestrian campaign for a year and a half in Newark that had two main streets completely. Uh, all the crosswalks repainted, new signals put in at three different ones, and I also wrote three different reports. So I have a, well, I'm a, considered a bike guy out here, I think, by most people. I'm what well, used to be a pedestrian guy. I like to be thought of that, too. But I'm here we'll because... We'll you into one. We'll make sure well, you're back. I appreciate that. Um, I'm here to testify today because and a lot of the conversation that I'm seeing seems to be focused on the Caltrans process, but when you're, you're seeing similar results year after year on the, the grants that are being submitted from the city, I think also it makes sense to look at the city's grant writing process also. I know the highest scored grant proposal from the last round was, was a city proposal, but it was written by the CRA uh, for a project. I don't remember the details because I didn't score that one, but it was the highest scored project that we had. And I think maybe, well, any things you want to do to, to you know, work on the Caltrans process is great. I think at least an equal effort should be made to bump up the quality of the DOT project proposals, and you'll see more of that money flowing in. And since a city project, the CRA project, had a lot of success with us last year, it might make sense also to try and broker a meeting there uh, to share their proposal with the DOT, because that's the CRA's project and their, what, they, what they did, how they wrote it, was clearly something more what the committee was looking for. Thank you. And I think, but, and before Stevens talks, so it would be a good idea for DOT to look at that too and see the successful uh, nature of that in the comparison of the two. Steve. Hi, my name is Stephen Box. I'm also um, often thought of as a cyclist, but I'm here as a swimmer today um, because the mode. Uh, discussion has come up that are these people truly 
pedestrians or truly cyclists or I think that we should operate from a perspective of equality that we should be arguing for all modes um, and and many of the propositions that come before the uh, the proposals that come up there for um, they're uninspired I grimace when I hear the fair share argument um, I think we should be arguing for projects that are inspired that would truly be based on content or merit and if we're going to go on fair share we have to keep in mind that the city of Los Angeles loses more than its fair share of safe, safe routes of school funding we're not truly examining the content of the projects that we're proposing or what we do with the money when we get the money and in both cases I think we fall far short of an appropriate standard Last night in Woodland Hills, for example, 35 people joined uh, the community in a discussion with the DOT of what's going on in the community with regards to safety and speed limits, et cetera. The principal of the local high school where their parents were there who try to drop their kids off. And the question is, well, why do you keep dropping them off rather than letting them walk? And they laugh because the streets are uncrossable. Missing from these discussions is, are we engaging the community? And it didn't come up so far. In other words, there was a let's make sure that the city council is in, in, involved, the council offices, but we aren't engaging the community, the neighborhood councils. And so uh, you've heard me say this before, and I'll say it again. Um, we need to involve the community in looking for inspired projects that will move children and make it comfortable for them to uh, and safe for them to walk and ride their bikes to school. Wonderful. Well, see, this is your invitation, even though you're not in my district, but for the districts that you live and work in. Um, to give them some ideas of projects. We do count on our elected officials, all of us, to make sure we are inclusive in what mm -hmm. either one, we've already had meetings about it and we're just adding on or have a special meeting about mm -hmm. it. But it is incumbent upon us as well to mm -hmm. engage. Thank you. Thank, Thank you both. Swimmers and pedestrians didn't know both of those. <laughs> Any other questions for my colleagues? Okay, if not, um, I believe we would adopt the um, CLA, receive and file the department's report, and um, we'll see you back last week of Mar or last meeting in March with the recommendations. And we'd like some comments and about the legislators and stuff yes. like that, too. And uh, for Mr. Parks to see why O'Shea wasn't competitive last time and what we need to do differently to make it competitive this time. Okay. Great. Thank you to Caltrans, and we're glad you're going to have local control here. We'll just be watching you even more closely. Yeah. So. Yeah. Come, Thank you. Come to the meeting, or your staff is coming uh, on Friday in my office uh, oh, okay. on the 30th. Great. Thank you. That'll be the order. Item okay. number five is a Grove Parks motion and DOT report relative to the Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Authority's 2009 call for projects. Harry Paul Veer, DOT, and Michael Veno, DOT. Uh, your department is working with MTA, who have just announced the year 2009 call for projects. Uh, as you know, it's a, it's a competitive process, and we are, we are supposed to prepare applications, and the package, application package itself will be released in early February by Metro. Uh, both Mike Veno and myself are part of the Technical Advisory Committee. Uh, we're working closely with staff at, at MTA and Metro on this process. Um, we have initiated within the city family, sister departments, and council offices, the interdepartmental task force meetings to educate them on the process, uh, bring them on board. At the same time, uh, we're going to meet with each, each individual council office staff to enlist their cooperation and help in in figuring out projects which are needed in this area. There are various moral categories, as, as in the past. Uh, city has been very competitive in the, in the past and done pretty well on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on obtaining funding for various projects in the city. Um, we have uh, Metro staff on board here today. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer that. And so um, how are you identifying the matching funds for some of the projects being submitted? In the past, uh, matching funds have come from various sources, especially Prop C. Uh, as you know, Prop C is falling behind. We have budget shortfalls in that. Now we have uh, reports of Mayor R, some money trickling down to the city. Uh, we expect about $40 million annually when everything goes through. 
and <clears throat> then we have economic stimulus package coming on board. Uh, we have developer funds. Uh, we have Prop A funds. There are many various sources. It's going to be hard uh, to figure out match for every single project. Uh, but hopefully, with the cooperation of all the people, uh, we stay optimistic and, and, and provide a match for the good application. The main thing is the project has to be very competitive. It should score pretty well with the MTA staff. And then the more the match, the better it has a chance to, to get picked up. Um, and with the kind of, we're, I know freezing, they're freezing some of our state funds. Will that, the 1B, will that have an impact on our ability to also identify for some of the synchronization in the state? Um, well, it, I, I didn't hear the last part of the question. I'm sorry. Well, I know that there's a portion of here yes. in the early, I think it's the um, signal synchronization as one of the categories. Will the fact that our Prop 1B funds are frozen impact that, are competitive, I guess, for that? We, we were um, uh, eliminated from competition for the signal sync because, uh, other because we took the $150 million in the Prop 1B. Choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, colleagues, I know um, they're going to, the action that we're recommending, we do have a public comment card, is for them to come back within, because um, we, we have to call for projects will be due when? April, application is due in April. Mid-April. Mid-April. So we, it's, it's on the same time frame as the Safe Routes yeah, to School, so the end, end of March. March. So are we also going to have you come back then the last, okay, last Wednesday of, or last meeting in March? Yes. Okay. And again, you're working with the communities and using some of the, other, the projects that have not been funded and if there's any additional. Yes. Yeah. Parks and no. questions? I'm excited about this. This is where we need to be going, and since we passed Measure R, uh, we're in a stronger position. Am I right on that? Yes, we are in better shape now, although we have issues with Prop C, budget shortfalls. Yeah. Um, when I, again, I was saying it when the Caltrans guy was here, are we concerned about the sh shovel-ready projects going through Caltrans and what impact it would have on us uh, in our local funding? Well, because they're shovel-ready, um, we, and, and this, you know, the money for this call is going to be out in 2012 or 13 or so. And yeah. so it's two different groups of projects. So once right. they're shovel ready, we're, we're hoping to be completed by then. Yeah. And so there is not an intersection of these, these two Good. groups. But our, our, our expectations higher now that, you know, we're talking such an economic stimulus package and are we generating more thoughts, ideas, more potential job creations, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, but the you know the pot of money that's available in this call is very very small. Um, you know what's happened, and I've mentioned this before, is that the state and federal money goes to Caltrans, and then it used to be divided up, and uh, part of it went to the STIP, and part of it goes to the shop. It now all goes to the shop, and Caltrans is still short, and so th that's a, a major reason why this call is so much smaller. All that federal money that used to be in there, federal state money that used to be in there, is not in there this time. And so, um, uh, you know, just speaking long term, uh, you know, Measure R had very specific projects outlined in it with uh, local return money. And so there was no money for call projects in Measure R. But what MTA is doing is because the, uh, some of the Measure R projects are further out in the future, they're swapping Great. future call money with today's Measure R money and swapping them so they can enhance the call this year, but it means the future calls will be maybe even smaller unless we increase the pots of money that are, are used for those. Mr. Sack? Yes, good afternoon, Arnold Sachs. Um, I'm just curious, you're having a call for projects for 2009. Could we get an update on the percentage of projects from the call for 2008 that were funded, uh, what the status is of that? Um, it seems like there's so many card games going on here. The MTA hasn't approved the 2008 long-range transit plan that they spent uh, a bundle on uh, proposing, putting out fl 
all kinds of material on, not been approved. The only thing that was approved since in the last quarter of MTA meetings was an amendment to the 2001 plan so that it would allow the MTA to partake of the funding for the carpooling project. Other than that, don't know if we're on the 2001 long range plan or 2008 long range plan hasn't been approved. You do, you have a 2008 call for projects here for the city, a 2009 call for projects in the city. Just where exactly is there any way to find out in this moving mass of jello where you stand, where the public stands, what projects are being considered, what year they're being considered from, and what the funding status is of those projects? Because you keep throwing out these call for projects, and nobody knows who's got what, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know, third base. We know that routine. Abbott and Costello do it a lot better. MTA may polish it, but Abbott and Costello still do it a lot better. And it's a lot funnier. Because it doesn't include public money. It only includes the comedy. And, and there's enough comedy in, when it comes to funding projects that that's an over, overdose. I'm just looking to find out where, what, who, and how much. Simple questions. What year are you talking about? What year are the projects talking about? Where, what is the status? Are we recalling what we're calling? Are we calling just anything? Right. Forward to when it comes back in, in March, um, I think that uh, we similarly are, are having to respond. I mean, it, unfortunately, it's not a once a year, here's the application for the entire federal, state, and local government. It's, it's something that we have to meet the demands as they come forward. So it is sometimes a, we're catch up on that. So. Okay, so the item that, uh, the action that we would be recommending is to approve the motion and ask you to report back the last Wednesday meeting of March with those recommendations. Okay, thank you. Next item. Item number six is a communication from the city attorney and ordinance relative to amending the uh, municipal code to provide for free parking for certain alternative fuel vehicles. And I know this is this, this is this is uh, coming back, and we had a lot of debate before on this item. The recommendation that's now coming forward, and I, um, I think I feel more comfortable now than I did before. Which, the recommendation we have is to receive and file the final ordinance, um, um, terminate the the parking pilot program effective March 1st, and direct LAT to DOT to outreach the neighborhood councils notifying them the program is ending and direct DOT to issue warnings in lieu of citations during outreach and for, um, it says 15 to 30 days, or really 30 days um, on that part of it. And, and it's going to be an ongoing education. These people have been doing this for how many years? Four and a half years now. Alan Willis from DOT. Four and a half years, yeah. So I, I think education and, and flexibility and explaining, you know, is really important uh, because, um, we don't really want to, for those people who don't know about it, and there, we've got to think of creative ways not only through neighborhood councils but other kind of publicity where we could do that. So I know I know where Bill is on this, so I don't have to man one of it. Mr. Parks, do you have any questions? Then, Mr. I know you will. Mr. Parks? No, I, I think that's appropriate. Okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> I think we've given them enough grace period. Uh, we, I, I do want us to pick up roughly 300000 Is that what we think it now would be? At a minimum annually, yes, $300,000. Gold in the gutter. Uh, they had a great joy uh, of having that sticker on their car. Um, uh, and uh, then they had a whole other year to play it out and enjoy it, uh, which um, is the envy of a lot of folks who have Priuses and these other cars that got it since that sticker program uh, was closed. So um, they should be thrilled that they get still some more time until March. But the key will be to get the word out. Do we have a list? Do we have any way of communicating to those folks who have that sticker now that that wonderful moment is over and they're now going to have to pay like everybody else? Okay. Uh, we, we actually have uh, the information about the program posted on our 311 website. Uh, we can post it on the DOT website. We also have been in contact over the years with uh, several nationwide uh, websites that for alternative fuel vehicle owners and uh, talking about the various programs in different states and cities. So we can get the word out to all of them uh, about the change in the program. Is it possible to take uh, the state, which it, Caltrans, Caltrans who, who issued that DMV. sticker, to get the list of LA city uh, residents and license plates so we could
clear enough to contact them directly and let them know March 3rd or whatever the date we're saying, March 18th. What is the date we're closing it out? Well, I think the recommendation was originally something like give at least 30 days notice from the council action that the program would be, say the program would be terminated in 30 days from the council action on this. You know, you have to get that sticker, which is who's eligible now. To get that sticker, you have to be registered with the state. Is there a way for the state of California, because of the registration, to be able to notify those people that it no longer would work? Well, okay. There may be a way to do that. Whether they're willing to do that or not for us is another question. But the other thing that's more important here is that the pilot program that we've been running in L.A. allowed four vehicles, regardless of whether they had the decal. So we've got a greater mass of people that own Priuses that don't have the decals and would never be reached by that state program. But I think there's more knowledge based on the sticker-based ones than there is the others. I mean, I think we should ask Caltrans. I would imagine that they do some communication with the people who are registered and talking about when their program is going to terminate in 2000 and what is that? I think it's 2011 or something like that at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's soon. Then I have another angle. Our great parking officers do a great job. When the date goes into effect, whatever the date will be after council action, 30 days, is it possible for them to put a flyer on the car saying it is no longer a freebie, you know, that from now on you're going to be charged? Because I've gotten a lot of flack on when we raise the rates on meters in different spots of how we inform folks who, in sincerity, think they have an opportunity and don't. Can we do that? Yeah, and that's part of the plan with the 30 days is we will issue warnings to individuals. The question comes is that one individual that is visiting L.A. three months from now or six months from now that, you know, and those are things we can work case by case and go through the process, but we will assure as much as we can to provide. And I think that's really the best way. It's going to be so difficult to try to get lists of accurate lists of DMV and try to get the registered owner and then, you know, try to mail these things out to them. So when they're in Los Angeles and we've got this, there's a way on the warnings that the officers can identify those vehicles and issue a warning saying this program is ended and call this number or we'll put it on our website, as Alan mentioned. What we would like also to do in our district is our eight neighborhood councils, we want to make sure we contact them officially, let them know the deadline. Also, we will do an e-mail blast to the folks who are on it. Also, I want to give notice. I'd like to give notice to folks as much warning time as possible. Yeah, we'll work with our liaison to provide all the neighborhood councils and we'll work with each deputy or chief of staff to make sure whatever other stakeholders within each council office you feel this information should go, you know, we'll do that as well. Right. And the good thing about the handheld ticket writers, as the mayor mentioned, was the fact that it won't be a ticket, but during this 30-day period, every time we see one of these hybrid vehicles parked at a meter, we can issue that warning, letting in the warning will tell them this free parking program ends March such and such. And so we also have a record of the license plate of that vehicle and how many times they received a warning. So if they come back later on and we ticket them after that date, we've got the evidence. That's great. Wonderful. We do have two public speaker cards, Damian Newton and Stephen Box. This was actually the first thing I ever spoke on in front of you guys back in February of last year. Well, how time flies when you're having fun. Right, right. Well, first I wanted to actually say thank you to Councilman Rosendahl. After the city council last year passed an extension, a one-year extension of the program, I think it was a one-year extension, but after they passed an extension of the pilot program, it was on the consent calendar. If I remember correctly, the next meeting, you rose to ask that it be reconsidered, and that's led to where we are today. And I think, since I think you're going to get some feedback, negative feedback from some constituents that are used to the project, I'd like to just remind you that this program last year was, extending the program was opposed by a lot of environmental groups, including the Sierra Club, the Transit Coalition, and L.A. Walks, because programs like this tend to increase vehicle miles traveled, and really what we try to go for is less cars on the road, not more cars driving around looking for 
you know, the free parking instead of going into a pay lot. Um, the only suggestion I could have is that you're, if you're expecting $300,000 more and going on the, the Donald Shoup philosophy of reinvesting parking funds is uh, find something in the, find something that costs around $300,000 that isn't funded right now that is good for transportation or good for the environment in some way and dedicate it towards that so that when you do get that negative feedback from people, you can say, you can, you know, give the mini explanation about VMT, but most people just sort of glaze over on that, but say, hey, that money's going to fix these parks or to paint this bike lane or something else, because that's how you capture people's imagination on this sort of thing instead of just having it go to the general fund, because people sort of just roll their eyes at that sort of stuff. So anyway, um, thanks, everybody, for, for working on this. It was a And you can see we, we listened. I mean, I was one of those. I wasn't sure. I thought we'd made some commitments to people who had the hybrids, but I, I was convinced as well. So you can know that government works and democracy and all of that. But Dr. Shoup, I saw him just a week or so ago while I was at UCLA for something, and we were talking parking meters, and he reminded me the importance of that giving back, that he was supportive right. of, because we were talking about the raising of the rates and the outcry and how to respond to that. So right. he's a right. great resource for us. Thank you. Thank you. Michael, carry on. Yes, my name is Michael Carrion, and I'm here on the same issues. You know, we keep speak, speaking about finding ways to raise money and how to creatively cite people. We're, we give them a privilege and we take it away. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was in city council and I heard, you know, about the um, outreach that uh, DOT did. Very poor. Now you're going to take this away and then you're going to start citing people. <coughs> Then you're going to give them notices, and again, I'm just trying to get on the same issue on where this police issue is going to be solved. It, it, it's, I came up today, there were 46 cars parked in Judge Aliso. There were 14 parked right outside in front of Parker Center, all the way up to the fire hydrant again. There were four parked outside across the street from City Hall. And in Hollenbach's the same thing. There's one in front of the police station on North Broadway, not the police station, but the substation. Traffic, gridlock in tollway zones. I'm trying to get out of here right now because I don't want to get my car towed away. So these are the things that we have to assist to. We have to abide by or our cars get taken. But yet the city vehicles are not enforced. Now you're going to start enforcing this law, but yet you're still not enforcing the laws you have in the books or yet. So all I'm asking for is equal enforcement. I've been at city halls long enough that you guys have had enough time to give the free citations out or warnings and everything. And I think if it's revenue you're looking for, I think I gave you the numbers. It was $1.25 million that you guys can be collecting if you're citing the police officer for parking illegally. That's a, that's a lot of money that you guys can get. And basically what you're also going to be doing is cleaning up the congestion off the streets. If you cite them, they won't park there no more equally. Thank you. Item number eight is the CAO report relative to Metro and Expo Line Construction Authority's annual work program for 2008-09. Angela Berman, CAO. Um, this report provides the recommendations to reimburse eight city departments for their work performed on the Metro Rail and Expo Rail light, um, light rail projects. The total departmental reimbursements are approximately $900,000. Additionally, this report provides the necessary personnel to be continued and added for um, continuation of these projects. Mr. Sack? Yep. Where are you coming? I think he left. No, there he is. Arnold Sachs, and I'm sure you have an inkling of what I'm going to talk about. Um, there was an article in the LA Times from the 21st of November, Working to Transform the Washington Corridor. It was a two-page article. It even included a little map identifying the mid-city district of Los Angeles. 
Men over coffee and muffins to mull and fret about the Washington Boulevard corridor stretching roughly between Fairfax and La Brea Avenues. The map shows that district highlighted. And below it, you can see the 10 freeway. And at the bottom, you can see Jefferson Boulevard, which is not as far south as Exposition Boulevard, where the supposedly mid-city expo line runs. I've discussed it a few other times, where the naming, when it came about in MTA headquarters, was originally called the Aqua Line. There was discussion to create, to call it the Rose Line. Councilman Parks brought it up, naming it after the rose bushes at USC. After much heated discussion, because there had been funding spent on pushing the Aqua Line, it was again brought back to the Expo Line. At no time, none whatsoever, in all the updates from the Construction Authority, has the term mid-city been applied to the Expo Line, except here. If it's the same project, then it's the Expo Line. If it's a different project, then it's taking funding. Make your minds up. I understand that it's old and repetitive, but all too often you can tell a lie. If you tell a lie often enough, it becomes a truth, and Thank that's you. what's happening here. Thank you, Mr. Sachs. Don't go too far because we're going to go to public comment in a moment. Any statements, Mr. Parks? No, I would just like uh, on this item eight. Is, uh, really, the, the hard work was done by uh, Mike Hernandez and LADOT to put together the original contract to be able to work with MTA so we would have a very easy process of receiving funding for the work done. And it took months, but I think it comes to light that why all that work was necessary. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, then on item eight, the action would be to approve the CAO's recommendations. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sachs and Stephen Box, our two public comment cards. I think Mr. Carrion also had one, but I think he's left. Good afternoon. Arnold Sachs, my public comment. Um, back in October, this committee uh, authorized funding, I believe it was $750,000 for costs incurred to prepare a transit-oriented development district and station area plans for the proposed LAX Green Line extension. At one of the uh, South Bay Regional Council of Governance meetings, an MTA spokesman came out and had a prepared diagram, more or less, of the proposed Green Line extension. It shows two additional stations in addition to the Aviation Green Line station. One is located along Century Boulevard, and one is located along Westchester Parkway, a little bit west of, I believe it's Sepulveda Boulevard. Right. The question would be, since both of them are relatively close to the flight path, at what, which one of those stations would the transit orienta orientation take place? Which station would be prepared for development? Why $750,000 when it doesn't make sense to put any kind of development there except to load and unload passengers? Then I'd also like to talk about something with the cab companies. Back in uh, 2007, a driver came in, I don't know if he was working for a cab company or not, with a letter from the Department of Treasury that stated that the drivers are not to be off labeled as um, damn, subcontractors. And so if the IRS has found this ruling that not to label the drivers as, as subcontractors, what is the city's status on that? There's a little article, just very quickly I'll wrap this up, regarding the trucks at the port where the Attorney General has filed com complaints 
breaking the law, labor law, and skirting state disability requirements. I'd like you to conclude, Mr. Sachs. I, I'm finishing up. By mislabeling their drivers independent contractors. So if they're looking to fight the law or, or, or enforce the law at the ports, independent contractors, what is the city's stance when the cab companies label their drivers as independent contractors? That's part and, of our And the IRS okay. has said that's not true. Thank you. And I know that. Department's listening in as you have questions. Mr. Bob. They're not acting on it. They, they got the letter. They didn't act on it. Hi, my name is Stephen Box. One of the items I wanted to speak on was the Chicker in court, but I missed it. Um, so I'll loosen up my comment. I was there for the inauguration. It's a wonderful place. I've been to two inaugurations here in the city of Los Angeles. The first one was uh, Mayor Antonio Villaragosa, and uh, my wife and I rode our bikes, and we stood in the street outside City Hall. It was a wonderful experience as he uh, proclaimed this the um, greenest, cleanest big city in the United States of America. And we drank the Kool-Aid and we were all for it. And I stood on the street outside uh, LA Live. Uh, there were 1,500 people, maybe 1,000, maybe 2,000. Who knows? There were a lot of people. A small number relative to the capacity, which they say is 30,000 people. Yet they still had to install porta potties for our small little gathering on the uh, last week for the inauguration. There's no public restrooms. So if we're truly to um, pursue a walkable uh, city where you can hail a taxi, ride your bike, how about some bike racks? Again, oops. This is the largest development that we have of any significance in a long period of time. Heaven forbid the little ones should actually think of the inspired um, innovations that would encourage pedestrians and cyclists and people that take mass transit if we can't even get it right on the big ones. They did put in a restroom and they explained it's in the parking garage because after all, after being in traffic for 45 minutes, and I said, well, that's the problem. We're still accommodating motorists while we pretend. Now, as far as hailing a taxi, they're all up at 7th and Fig. But keep in mind, the signs say no stopping. If you really want to say, if you, you need to let the tourists know. Um, and so in terms of wayfinding, they have bike racks. They're just inaccessible. You have to take your bike down an escalator. So in, in other words, we're, we, we say it, but keep in mind even uh, the city's invitation to the city gave parking instructions. So we don't even have the ability to tell people where the bus stop is, how to get there, where to park your bike, or where to go to the loop. Imagine a woman with a baby in a baby carriage and a toddler and no restroom for miles. It's not going to happen. Have a nice walk. So thanks very much for your consideration. But it's already on the books, LA, the municipal code for bike racks. It's just not being enforced on the big ones that are our partners with our money. So I thank you for your um, attention. Thank you. I would love to comment uh, in the general sense that uh, I would love to see um, from MTA and DOT where we are putting in public restroom facilities. I'm kind of incensed that MTA at all their stops have no bathrooms. I mean, you know, uh, what's the problem? And I'd like some other point, maybe I have to do a motion to find out that we need public restrooms everywhere. They do it all over the world, but here. Uh, and of course, the bike rack idea is, is absolutely right on, too. If we could somehow address that in the future uh, uh, response from staff, I'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Seeing no other public comment cards, uh, we are adjourned. Oh, no.